Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your valuable time and association this morning. We are very fortunate to have you on the call. Today's topic is Glories of Lord Ramachandra. Please take over, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, we can't hear you. Nama Om Vishnu Padai, Krishna Pusnai Bhutalai, Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namune, Namaste Saraswari Devi Gaudavani Pucharine, Yavase Sasunyavari Pasyat Yare Sutarine, Panchakalpa Thurubhishya Kripa Sindhu Veda Chapatita Anam Bhavane Gyo Vaishnava Gyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakti Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare um, Ramadi Murti Sukalani Amena Tishtan Nanavatar Akaro Bhuvanesha Kintu Krishna Swayam Sama Bhavat Paraman Paman Yo Govinda Mari Gurusham Tamaham Bajami. This verse from the Srimad Ramasamita illustrates the appearance of the different incarnations of the Lord. And the chief of all the incarnations of the Lord is the, in the Leela category, is Lord Sri Ramachandra. Uh, Lord Sri Ramachandra is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he appeared in this world approximately two million years ago in the Treta Yuga. And Lord Ramachandra's pastimes are known throughout the three worlds. Even in this particular planet where we live in, it's not his, his fame, glories, and his activities. And the frequency by which people investigate the pastimes of the Lord is the greatest of all aspects of the Supreme Personality of God in terms of he is the most popular manifestation of the Supreme Lord more so than even Krishna, because Ram is celebrated not only within the area of India, but throughout the whole uh, Asian continent. He is known by different names, and his pastimes are similar, with a slight difference. So people in many cultures read the Ramayana that is titled under different uh, names. The Lord appeared... Um, like he always appeared in order to give pleasure to his devotees and to associate with his devotees and give them a chance to move forward in the process of Krishna consciousness. Uh, the Lord uh, came and we see that mainly one of his leelas or one of the main parts of his appearance, it was to remove irreligion from the world. And that was in the case of this very powerful demon known as Ravana, who was ravaging many of the areas of the world, particularly around uh, where the Lord appeared. Um, the demigods were disturbed and therefore they went to Lord Brahma and Lord Brahma petitioned the Supreme Lord to come and the Lord came in four forms, which are the incarnations of the Narayan aspects of the Lord. They are Vasudev, Sankarsana, Pradyumna and Aniruddha, who represents the Chaturvyuha, which is the, the Narayan expansion of the Lord that comes from Sri Balarama as he expands into the uh, manifestations of the Vaikuntha realm. Now this uh, understanding has manifested itself in another way also 
Some people say, or at least some commentators say, that the four personalities who appeared, Sri Ram, Bart, Lakshman, and Satrudna, were incarnations of the four symbols of Lord Vishnu, the conch, the disc, the club, and the lotus. Both uh, commentators are correct because both of these aspects fit into the appearance of the Lord's manifestation. So for the last week um, on my regular conference, which many of the devotees are present today, we've been narrating various aspects of the Lord's pastime. And today I would like to particularly connect with one particular pastime, which is uh, one of the more uh, loved pastimes by everyone, and that's the uh, marriage of Sita and Ram. Mm -hmm. I was noting that the verse that you gave me for Srimad Bhagavatam that was originally scheduled was a principle that is the basic uh, principle of material life, and that is the attraction between the opposite sexes, man for woman and woman for man. And Rishabdev in his uh, statement and then Srila Prabhupada in his commentary makes that point. But uh, in that verse, it explains that this, this attraction for man and woman and woman and man is actually a feature of the material energy and therefore it's a misconception. The misconception is not the attraction. The misconception is the basic principle of material life and everything connected with it is a misconception. And the highest form of that misconception is the attraction of the opposite sexes. But where does that attraction come from? How is it? It's something that's normal. At least it appears to be very normal. Nobody has to learn it. It comes from the Supreme Lord himself. Uh, the Supreme Lord is attracted to his uh, energies who manifest in different forms of himself. And so we have Lakshmi Narayan, we have Sita Ram, we have uh, Radha and Krishna, and we have many of the incarnations that have their consorts. So this principle of female-male relationship in the attraction principle originates in the spiritual world. It manifests as here as a perverted reflection of itself in the form of male and female attraction because the attraction is based on the body and the body is a misconception where the body is something that is not the individual but is simply the place where the individual, individual resides while they're in the material world. So we have a body and we are not this body. If we have a male body, we might be attracted to a female body if we have a female body, we might be attracted to a male body, but we could change lives. And then that same soul that was once a female is now a male in a male body and vice versa. So that's why it says in that verse that was scheduled, originally scheduled as today's class, is it's a misconception because the whole arrangement of the material energy is based on the body and the body itself is a misconception. But there is that principle of natural attraction. And Krishna is attracted to his energies because his energies serve him in loving devotion. So there's a beautiful pastime in this regard in the uh, life of Sri Ram. Ram plays the part of the perfect king, the righteous king, the king that is fair and righteous and follows all the principles of saintly rule. He also follows the principle of uh, ideal husband. You see, when Krishna appeared, he had many consorts, many wives. And that's true in many of the incarnations of the Lord. But in this particular manifestation of the Lord, as Sri Ramachandra, the perfect king, he was also the ideal husband. And so Ekapatni, is one of his descriptions, that means only one wife. <laughs> and so the story is, is a beautiful story. The whole, the whole Ramayan is loved by everyone. 
This is one of the pastimes of the Lord you could read over and over and over and over again and find great happiness and uh, real attraction that develops for Lord Ram because his qualities are so outstanding and so magnanimous. Uh, he's perfect in all aspects of the Godhead and exhibits all the qualities in perfection without any any contradiction in the qualities. So Ram is, uh, is glorified in that way. And the Ramayan itself has so many pastimes of the Lord, which illustrates many of the important points that are required for us to make progress in spiritual life. And uh, so in those Leelas, we learn so much about what is our relationship with God? And what is the nature of our service? But we also learn about morality, spirituality, character, and all the principles that come with good character, such as truthfulness, uh, kindness, equanimity, um, sacrifice for the benefit of others. These are all found within the character of Sri Ram. And not only found, but found in the most exemplary way. So we study the life of Ram along with hearing of his pastimes. We can understand so many principles that are applicable for us in our practice of devotional service. When Ram was just a young boy, um, his father, Dasarat, was visited by this great sage whose name was uh, Vishwamitra Muni. Vishwamitra Muni had been a, a famous, powerful king at one time, but he had transformed himself into a Brahmin. He had been defeated by Vishishta Muni, and in that defeat, he understood that Brahma Tejas, the power of Brahma, is greater than Kshatriya Tejas, the powers of the Kshatriyas. So he decided to perform austerities and penance, and he did for thousands of years, and he qualified him to be a perfect, himself to be a perfect Brahmin. Now he was following all the principles of Brahminical culture and living in the forest. He had come to visit Dasarat. Dasarat welcomed the, the sage, knowing of his spiritual qualities, and honored him in so many ways. After honoring him and serving him in so many ways, he requested you know, Vishwamitra to, to reveal why he has come. And Vishwamitra Muni said, well, actually in the forest, there are two very powerful demoniac personalities. Their names are Maricha and Subahu. And they are Rakshashras, and they are defiling all of the sacrifices that the sages are performing in the forest. He said, I myself have the power to destroy these demons, but since I have accepted the Brahminical life, that is not the job of the Brahmins, that is the job of the Kshatriyas. And so I've come on request of the sages to petition that you Give me Ram and Lakshman, and I will take them, and uh, they will be able to dispatch these two uh, demons. Dasarat was shocked to hear that, because his sons were only 16 years old. They were more, no, no mere, more than just young boys in, in the real sense of the term. But Vishwamitra Muni, by his Brahminical power, could understand who who Ram was and how powerful he was. So on his request, <laughs> Dasarat became a little bit under, uh, unhappy and, dis and countered by saying, well, actually, you know, I have my armies and I will also lead them and I will come and help you with these demons. Vishwamitra Muni was not, he had a, another plan in mind. He wanted to glorify Ram. 
So he was persistent. And knowing that when a Brahmin makes a request, if the Kshatriyas do not honor it, then they could be great misfortune for the Kshatriyas. And so he reluctantly agreed to give his two sons, and they were off with Vishwamitra Muni. And during that time, they met the two demons, and Ram killed Subaha, and with another arrow, he knocked Maricha for 800 miles into the ocean. After that event, uh, Vishwamitra Muni says, I would like to take you to Mithila. There is one great king, his name is Janaka, and he has been performed a test for all the Kshatriyas. He has a beautiful daughter, her name is Sita Devi, and she is the prize for the winner of the test. I think you boys should now come with me and take part in that test. In other words, he was arranging for the marriage of Ram. Ram and Lakshman developed a real attachment for Vishwamitra Muni, and so they came. They had traveled many distances. Finally, they reached the outskirts of the kingdom of Janaka. Many of the uh, uh, guards and ministers uh, became aware of the appearance of these three personalities and alerted Janaka. Janaka came out with all his ministers and was so happy to greet Vishwamitra Muni, who everyone knew was a very powerful and great sage. Uh, he wasn't aware of who these two other persons who were with him was, but he was, he was pleased to see them and to see they, they, they looked like very glorious young men who had great power. <laughs> Uh, after he, they met, um, Vishwamitra Muni reminded Janaka of the test that he was said. He said, yes, my daughter, she is, she is uh, how I found her. She didn't come to me by way of normal appearance. I was plowing the field one day. I decided to do the the plowing, and my plow hit a box. When I stopped, I saw there was a beautiful box decorated so nicely. So I was curious, and I dug away, and unearthed the box, and found within the box a beautiful, little, tiny, young baby girl. I said, who is this? She looks like the goddess of fortune herself, although she is still, still a baby. We can, can see that she has so many amazing qualities. So I raised her as my daughter, and she is known as Janaki, the daughter of Janaka. And so growing up, I had noticed her many wonderful qualities. And I was thinking, this girl, husband should only be Lord Vishnu himself. I can't see anyone else that would be a suitable match for this for my daughter. Now I had received a gift from the demigods when Shiva 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 was uh, <laughs> came to the demigods one time and there was a contention between Shiva and some of the demigods. So Shiva was about to battle the demigods, but the demigods realized that if they fought with Shiva, they would be destroyed. And so they immediately surrendered to Shiva, offered obeisances to Shiva, started to glorify Shiva, and in so many ways pleased Lord Shiva by their glorification. Uh, Shiva said, because you have honored me nicely, I want to give you a gift. Here, this is my own personal bow. So they took the bow and they kept it. After for many, many years, they decided to give that same bow to the, one of the greatest kings on earth at that time. 
Janaka. So I think it was, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Architect of the demigods, Vishwakarma. They had fixed the bow up so nicely and decorated it and made it a present to Janaka. Now this bow was so heavy <laughs> that no one could pick it up. And so the demigods combined, many of them carried the bow to Janaka and they placed it in this uh, casing. It was an iron box and it was closed. And then they decorated it up with so many jewels and other ornaments along with garlands. And Don Janica kept that bow and he thought, oh, this is a good way to bring, you know, a husband for my daughter. So he made a declaration that any of the kings who could string this bow would be suitable for the marriage of my daughter, Sita Devi. And uh, the bow was so heavy that in order to bring it for, to the forefront, it was rolled on a cart with 300 strong men would have to roll that bow just to move it, not to speak about picking it up. So they kept that bow there. And then uh, many of the Kshatriyas came, and even Ravana came, and uh, they were embarrassed. Some of them couldn't, some of them couldn't even look at the bow because it's so powerful. Others tried to pick it up and nothing happened. And they were embarrassed, they were humiliated, humiliated. And then these Kshatriyas, after all been frustrated in their attempts to win the, the hand of Sita Devi, got together and attacked the uh, kingdom of Janaka. Janaka was fighting and then he requested help from the demigods. The demigods came in their celestial armies and easily beat back these uh, Kshatriya kings who were attacking. But then Janaka was still concerned who would be that person who would marry. So Vishwar Mita Muni, of course, being a great sage, he could understand everything. So he said that actually here, I have come with these two powerful, powerful Kshatriyas. Actually, they're the sons of King Dasarat. When Janaka heard that they were the sons of Dasarat, he was happy because him and Dasarat were very, both very powerful kings who had developed an alliance and a friendship amongst themselves. And so uh, they decided to make a public display of the test. And so they took the bow, rolled it out to the center of the hall, invited people in the kingdom to come and witness. And so Vishwamitra Muni was there Janaka was there. Sita was on the balcony with many of her girlfriends watching from a distance. And when she saw, immediately she saw this beautiful personality who was the Supreme Lord himself, Sri Ram. Her heart immediately went out to him and she prayed, please make him my husband. And so Ram, it was time and everyone knew that so many powerful Kshatriyas who had come previously all failed. How could this young boy pick up that bow? But everyone was curious. So they rolled out the bow, they opened the case and there was Shiva's bow. It was big and not possible for anyone to pick it up. Lord Ram came up to the bow. He looked at the bow. He folded his hands in a prayerful way, offered prayers to the bow. And then in a very prayerful way, with both hands together, he grabbed the center of the bow. And everyone was 
watching with suspense. And immediately with a quick move, he moved the bow right above his head and held it in over his head. Everyone gasped in astonishment. Whoa, no one can pick up this bow in this young Kshatriya. He has easily picked it up like it was a, like it was an ordinary bow. And then he held it over his head. He brought it down and took the bow and stringed the bow in front of everything. And he stringed it in such a way that it was like a circle. He, and then he pulled back on the bow and it was practically like a circle when he pulled it back so far. And then he released the string. When he did, it made such a sound that everyone in the hall fell unconscious, except Sita, uh, Vishramita, Janaka, and others. And that sound traveled throughout the universe and it sounded like an earthquake had come. Sita Devi was overwhelmed with happiness and her loving sentiment started to blossom and it was being shown all over her transcendental form. And then she was so happy. And Janaka, he finally understood that this person here is not an ordinary person. He must be Vishnu himself because no one could string the bow. And then he came, they uh, honored Ram in so many ways, gave him a garland and welcomed him. And then Sita, after some time, she came and she, uh, in a very shy way, approached her future husband with her eyes looking down at the ground, holding the garland. And she came and she put a beautiful garland around the neck of, of uh, Ram. And then later on, it, it was said that, yes, there should be a marriage. We will engage, we will have a beautiful grand wedding. And we will invite all the kings in the area to come and see this beautiful marriage. And then Vishwamita Muni said, well, actually, um, Lakshman also. So Sita Devi had a sister, her name was Urmila. So it was arranged that Lakshman would marry Urmila and uh, Ram would marry uh, Sita Devi. Mm -hmm. But before they could actually do that, they had to get the permission of Dasarat, who was living a distance away. So Janaka arranged for many of his ministers and a complete army to accompany him. And on a three day trip, they arrived in uh, Dasarath's kingdom. When he came, Dasarath welcomed him and his entourage, so happy to see his old friend, who was also a very powerful Kshatriya and had all good qualities. Janaka revealed what had happened and how his son, Ram, had strung the bow and won the beautiful hand of his daughter. When Dasarat heard that, he was so happy. And he said, yes, let there be a wedding. And so he arranged for a big entourage to come. And many soldiers, along with all the other brothers, Satrugna and, and Bart, and on a five-day trip, along with the soldiers, they traveled from Ayodhya to, uh, to uh, Mithila. The kingdom of Janaka was called Mithila or Mithila. So after five days, and during that time, all wedding arrangements were made, grand reception. It was like Lakshmi Narayan was again being reunited in this grand celebration. And it describes so nicely, especially in Tulsi's Ramayan, the beauty of that particular wedding. And not only did uh, Ram and Lakshman get married, but um, it was requested by Vishwamita Muni that the other two brothers, Sudhrugna and uh, and uh, uh, Bart would also get married. So, uh, and Janaka said, yes, my brother Kusha Dwaja 
his two daughters, Manda, Manda, Mandavi and Shruti Kirti. Shruti, Shruti Kirti. They are looking for husbands. They are, they are our wedding age. So let us have a grand wedding with the four brothers and their wives. So that's described nicely. Um, that, that wedding in the grand display of loving sentiments and how everyone was so happy to see that wonderful, wonderful wedding of Sita Ram and the three brothers with their wives. <clears throat> So then they got acquainted and stayed there for many days. After that time, it was time for uh, Dasara to return to his kingdom, along with his minister Vashishta and his entourage of soldiers, along with Ram and uh, his newly wedded wife and Lakshman, all the brothers with their wives, they were all going to go to uh, Ayodhya. While they were traveling, Dasarad started to notice some omens were coming up and he saw birds were flying low and making very strange sounds. And he said to Vishwa, Vashishta Muni, Vashishta, I can see that there's some portents, some evil omens are appearing. Vashishta said, yes, something as bad is about to happen, but we will survive it because I see, looking here to the right, deers are crossing a stream. So yes, something will happen, but we will survive and everything will be auspicious. So then, right after he spoke, things started to change. The whole area became dark and uh, clouds formed and there was this, and all of a sudden, terrible noises. And out of the darkness, all of a sudden, one very powerful personality who was looked like death personified himself. Although he was beautiful in nature, he still carried this powerful nature. And it was Parasaram, Lord Parasaram himself. And he immediately after, of course, when he appeared, even the soldiers in the armies were completely confounded. Their senses couldn't even function. What was happening here? Everybody was overwhelmed by the presence. And, they, and, every, and Dasarath was fearful knowing who Parasabram was. He was famous for finding these Kshatriya kings who were proud and arrogant and were ruling in that mood. And he had destroyed 21 generations of Kshatriyas. Now he appeared and he was in a very angry mood. He turned to Ram. He said, Ram, I have heard that you have strung the bow of Lord Shiva. And obviously, that is a great feat. But since you are a Kshatriya, I am going to challenge you to a battle. Before I challenge you to a battle, I have my bow here, which is the bow of Lord Vishnu. This bow is even more powerful than the bow of Lord Shiva because everyone knows that Vishnu is the source of Shiva. And so he took out that bow and that bow was huge. And he had a blazing, he had a beautiful arrow, not blazing, but a golden arrow. And he handed the bow to Ram. He said, here, take this bow. Ram changed and he became so fierce. He grabbed the bow and Parasaram said, and if you fail to string the bow, we, I will fight with you. So Ram took the bow with one hand, grabbed it, held it over his hand, strung the bow, grabbed the arrow that uh, was given to him by Parasaram, pulled it back and released that arrow. 
that arrow went all around the universe. And when, when Ram pulled that bow back, he pulled it so, it was his own bow because he is Vishnu himself. It, it actually cracked in three pieces. He actually destroyed the bro by his power. When everyone saw that, of course, they fell to the ground by the sound of the cracking of the bow. And uh, Parasaram was so happy. <laughs> he said, I can see you're not just a Kshatriya, you are actually Vishnu himself. So I offer my respects and obeisances to you. I honor you. I understand now my position. I want to serve you. You are, you are the source of my existence. And so in so many ways, he glorified Sri Ram. And that's an interesting, I just gave a little brief synopsis of that encounter, but you can read it in detail in the Ramayana, that exchange between uh, Ram and Parasaram. It's quite heated. Ram remains calm, Parasaram remains an agitator, trying to, in so many ways, belittle Ram the Brahm doesn't really, doesn't doesn't budge a bit, and he shows his prowess when he grabbed the bow, and not only strung it but broke it. <laughs> and this bow was much more powerful than Shiva's bow. And of course, then after some time, this pastime, and then uh, Parasaram disappeared, and. Uh, the entourage went back to Ayodhya, and then, of course, they took up residence there in Ayodhya. Sita and all her uh, god sisters and relatives, and Dasarat and all the queens, and they lived there for many years until that pastime where Kaikeyi um, came up with the idea of putting her own son, she was influenced by Mantara, we told that past time, I think yesterday or the day before, I can't remember, the day before yesterday, and uh, how Sita, Ram, and Lakshman, uh, on the order of their father, reluctantly accepted banishment into the forest for 14 years, which led up to the meeting of Hanuman and all the monkey soldiers, and then to the destruction of Lanka and the, Rav, the powerful Ravana king. Uh, the Ramayana is so beautiful, it's so full of so many wonderful details. Um, I would suggest for those of you who want to really get into the mood, and we should all try to get into that mood of the appearance of uh, the Sri Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Ram, these days of the appearance of the Lord are meant for us to go deeper into Krishna consciousness, into Ram consciousness, hear about these pastimes and uh, speak about them and learn more about our relationship with the Lord by hearing about the glories of the Lord. Not only learn, but become more and more attracted to devotional service because the whole principle of devotional service is to develop our attraction for the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord by, all, by nature is all attractive. Prabhupada would say that God has no name, but he has one name that is the perfect description of all his qualities in one, and that is Krishna. Krishna means that, that person who can attract everyone, all attractive. So that is the nature of the Supreme Lord. He is all attractive. And devotees are already attracted to the Lord, but we want to increase that attraction more and more. And as we increase our attraction for Krishna, we lose our attraction for the, the things of this world, which keep us bound up in the cycle of repeated birth and death. Um, the material world is just a perverted reflection of the spiritual world. What, ex what exists in the material world exists in the spiritual world in its perfection without any inebriates, without any deterioration, without any uh, forms of difficulties. Everything there is perfect. Just like we were referring to the verse today, today's proposed verse for Srimad Bhagavatam, 
The perfect loving relationship is between the devotee and the Lord. That is the perfect loving relationship. In that loving relationship, both the Lord and the devotee experience unlimited happiness in that relationship. So the more we hear about Krishna, Ram, especially Ram, but about this particular time, the more we develop an attraction, as the more we develop an attraction, the more our hearts become fixed in devotional service. And the more that happens, the more we can leave this material world and qualify ourselves to return back to the spiritual world, which is our original home. This world is not our home. It's proven by the fact that we can't live here, we can't stay here, nor can we be really happy here. Happiness here is just some fleeting experience that comes and goes. But happiness is the eternal nature of the soul's relationship with Krishna, with Ram, or with the Lord in any of his manifestations or incarnations. So we want to spend more time hearing about Krishna, glorifying Krishna, this is particularly Ram Lila. So I would humbly suggest to all the devotees who are listening today, spend some time, pick up the Ramayan and start reading, tell your friends, create a little circle of devotees coming together at a regular time and read together. And after you read, discuss what you read. These pastimes are so sweet and so full of important meanings and yet so um, they purify the consciousness and purification of consciousness means that one becomes more happy and more free from the anxieties of this material world okay so i'll uh, end here this is a little bit i just scratched hardly scratched the surface. I didn't even scratch the surface. I hardly scratched the surface of this unlimited ocean of devotion in the life appearance of Sri Ramachandra. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for such a wonderful session and for setting the mood for uh, Ram Navmi next week. Uh, Maharaj, uh, so on that particular day, what do we have to do? So we do uh, share the pastimes, try to read some more on the Ramayan, but uh, what are the other activities that we can do on uh, Ram Navmi? Thank you, Maharaj. Um, well, if you can go to the temple and take part in the celebrations there, that would be good. Or have a celebration amongst the devotees in the community. If anybody has deities of Sita Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman, you can also perform an Abhishek. Mm -hmm. We usually bathe the deities on these days, perform Abhishek according to the Pancharashriki principles. Um, but the main thing is to hear and chant the glories of Brahm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the beautiful class. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, we have one hand raised. Uh, Deepthi, can you please go, go ahead? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glory to you, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for wonderful narration for Ram, Ram's uh, pastimes. It was amazing. Uh, just wanted to ask only one question. Uh, did we ever find out, uh, like, who was Sita Devi's father then? Because she was, like, King Janak found her. So, 
afterwards nobody knows is it yeah, she's the goddess of fortune she appeared in this world in that way okay so she was just appeared like radha rani like appeared in the lotus flower is it yeah she appeared in the oh. life. she's in, she's the supreme goddess of fortune mm-hmm. okay hari krishna thank you hari krishna thank you so much maharaj is there anybody having any more questions Hare Krishna Gurudev please accept my humble obeisance in so glorious to Srila Prabhupada Actually, Saraswati was listening to the lecture and she has uh, another question not related uh, to the topic. May I ask that? Please. Um, uh, she asks uh, why Radharani couldn't uh, marry uh, Krishna in uh, reality? Was that her karma or... or why was that or well, what was that just if, if you like, if you read if you read the life of krishna you'll find out all the answers okay yeah the lord has relationships with his devotees in different ways If you read Jiva Goswami's uh, uh, Gopal Champu, you'll find at the very end, the last chapter is that there's the marriage between Radha and Krishna. Oh, really? That's at the very end. That's just to show that all, all the gopis are actually the only husband of Krishna. Although the gopis had other husbands, that was just a role those husbands played in order to enhance Krishna's pastimes. That's all. That's why. Oh, I understand. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Devo. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Koti Gandhat Pranam, Sila Prabhupada, Sila Guru Dev Ki Jai. Thank you for your association. Pray for us. Hare Krishna, is there anybody having any more questions for Maharaj? We accept comments too. Since it's the Ramayana, we can, you can, you can make your comments. Yes. Hare Krishna, is there anybody having questions and realizations for Maharaj? Please go ahead. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Hey. Oh, Tiffany, hey, hey. would you like to go ahead? Go ahead, Tiffany. <laughs> All right. I, I don't have any questions. I just wanted to say thank you. That was such a wonderful narration of the pastimes of Sri Ram. Um, it's always so lovely to hear it from different sources because even the same pastime or the same stories we hear, when we hear from someone different, we get different pieces of it. And so I'm very grateful for your narration. It was really sweet. And um, I'm actually looking forward to sharing it with friends. So Hare Krishna, thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, thank you. Thank you. Sri Devi. So my humble obeisances all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for transporting us into Ram Leela like this. It's so wonderful to hear. As uh, Your Holiness was relating about that great bow, uh, about how heavy it was and how it took 300 men to just move it, I'm remembering a little past time uh, when King Janak realized who his daughter was. She was just a young girl, Sita Devi, and she was just sweeping that area. And when it came to where the bow was, she just easily lifted the bow and swept under it and put it back. 
when Janak saw that, he realized she's not an ordinary girl. And that's when only, uh, I mean, that's when he realized that only the Lord can be her husband and made that uh, decision that he should marry the Lord. So just wanted to- Yeah, thanks for bringing that. Yeah, I, re I recall that part of the past time, but I didn't, sp I didn't speak it. <laughs> I wanted you to speak it. <laughs> oh, you're so kind, Guru Maharaj. I'm just so delighted to hear you uh, speak these pastimes. It just reminds me of my childhood and my growing up in India. Uh, you know, Ramayana is so wonderful that way. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. The pastimes are very, very wonderfully described. And little, a little bit louder, please, because your voice is very nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm not able to hear you. <laughs> Maharaj, she was saying that uh, pastimes are very, very nicely described. Oh, thank you, Hare Krishna. Yeah, this is um, Ram Lila is so full of descriptions that you can mention the same pastime and you could describe it in different ways. It's sweet. Ram Ram is righteous. He is the ideal person in all categories. And at the same time, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Everybody says, oh, we wish we could have Ram Raj right now. <laughs> the world is in need of Ram Raj. Yes, it is. So if we glorify the Supreme Lord enough, then the Lord will manifest his mercy in different ways in the lives of the devotees and in the lives of people in general also. You attract the Lord by glorifying the Lord. It's just like if somebody talks nice about you, of course, devotees are humble and they feel sometimes shy or they feel a little uh, embarrassed. But there's a, still when someone is talking nice about you, there's some attraction that develops there automatically. And so that that principle or that energy is there in Krishna. Krishna is, or Ram, the Supreme Lord, is the only glorifiable object. And when we when we actually glorify him, we're actually doing what we're supposed to do. <laughs> But still, because he is so grateful, he becomes happy when the devotees glorify him. He becomes happy because the devotee benefits by glorifying the Lord. Tell us about the the, the uh, Telugu song. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, this is so beautiful. When uh, Lakshman was in the forest on that first night, he had decided, I'm going to stay awake no matter what and guard my beloved Ram and Sita. And Goddess Nidra came to him and she says, what are you doing? And he says, I have taken this vow. I'm not going to close my eyes. I'm going to stay on guard and take care of my Ram and Sita. She says, how is this possible? In the human form of life, 
the human body needs rest and rejuvenation in the night. So you cannot do this. And Lakshman says, nothing doing. I'm going to do it. So she becomes very impressed by his determination. And she becomes so pleased. She grants him that benediction that he will be able to stay awake without closing his eyes for the entire length of the exile. But she says, somebody has to sleep for you. It is not possible for you to just stay awake like this. Somebody has to take that role of sleeping. So then Lakshman thinks and he says, my wife is very faithful, Urmila, so you ask her. And before he leaves for the forest, Urmila has asked him, Namrata asked this question, so I'm just explaining that uh, she says, my Lord, I want to go with you. I want to serve you. And then Lakshman explains to her, no, 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 no. My desire is that I will be completely focused on taking care of Ram and Sita. I will have no time. I will be distracted. I will not be able to take care of you. It is best for you to stay here and take care of our old parents. So as a dutiful wife, Urmila humbly agrees to that. And so Goddess Nidra goes to her and she says, you will have to sleep for Lakshman. And Urmila agrees. She sleeps for 14 years. <laughs> until they all come back as a sacrifice and as a duty to her beloved Lord Lakshman, her husband, who has told her through Goddess Nidra to take up this uh, service. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, it's the first time I heard that. Thank you. <laughs> Interesting. Did she sleep continuously or she slept only at night for 14 years? I don't know that Guru Maharaj, it, the, the, uh, that I don't know honestly. This is just some little research I did because I was so intrigued by Namrata's question. It was such an intelligent question. What about the role of all the other consorts? They are also, you know, Lakshman, Bharat, Chaturbhya, they are also the Lord. And their wives, therefore, also, you know, very powerful uh, servitors of the Lord. So it is because of Namrata that I did the research and... I just came across this uh, little. Uh, um, nice. Thank you. It was great to hear that. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Mara. Thank you, Namrata. Thank you so much, Mataji, for sharing that. Is there anybody having any more questions? Hare Krishna, Maharaj Dhanvatna. Maharaj, I was wondering, uh, would you uh, please share or throw some light on the different uh, versions of Ramayan? Uh, um, there is Tulsi Ramayan and in South also there are other versions. Uh, so uh, I was wondering, there uh, appear to be some uh, differences in these versions. Um, so how do we understand or how do we, uh, you know, how should well, we take Maharaj? As Vaishnavas and as instructed by Srila Prabhupada, our Ramayan is um, a Valmiki's Ramayan. <laughs> now, Valmiki's Ramayan has been nicely uh, condensed and presented in the ISKCON Society by one very wonderful devotee from London called Krishna Dharma, where he wrote an edition of the Ramayan. Uh, and it's one of the more easy reading. It's very easy to read because the way he presents it, he captures the storyline so nicely within sh shortened sentences. In other words, he knows how to present the pastimes in a condensed way where you get the essence of the condensed pastime of the pastime. Now, Tulsi, Tulsi Ramayan is very poetic, but Tulsi is a somewhat of an impersonalist. And you'll find that within the Ramayana there are many statements by Tulsi Das that indicates his impersonal so therefore, Prabhupada discouraged us from reading Tulsi Ramayan, but to read uh, Valmiki's Ramayan, like that. There's another Ramayan called Kumbi's Ramayan. 
Pambi uh, is and he was living in, uh, in Tirupati in that area for many years and his version also. Now Kambi's Mariah uh, Ramayan and um, Valmiki's Ramayan have been combined together by one devotee who has who is in the process of completing the entire Ramayan. And his presentation of that Ramayan is interesting because he is um, picking out all the different philosophical, moral, spiritual principles in the form of sutras and making them part of the, the reading. In other words, he footnotes practically every page with various types of moral and spiritual instructions that are gleaned from the different pastimes. That is Subha Velasa's Ramayan. He has done five, ver five of the khandas, seven khandas. There's, the Ramayan is seven khandas long. He's done five. So I would recommend you read either Ram the Krishna Dharma Ramayan. It's right here. If you want to see the, the book, there it is. You can see the author, Krishna Dharma. Here's the cover. It's more like a dark red color like that. If you can see it. Mm, yes, that, one, that one is the one I read regularly. And I also read uh, Subha Vilasas because his is so fascinatingly interesting. So these two are available within our ISKCON society like that. Now, if you can read Sanskrit, you can go and get also, you know, the uh, original Valmiki Ramayan in the Sanskrit and read from that. That would be nice also. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I just had a question because um, there is, I am I mean, if I uh, understand correctly, there is no mention of the Shabri pastime in uh, Valmiki Ramayan, but it's uh, so famous, uh, you know, reto famously retold and narrated in India even uh, to date. So uh, I'm, I was told that it's there in Tulsi Ramayan or some other version. So, but, but. Uh, it might be, see? it might be in Tulsi Das's Ramayan. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know where it's found. Mm -hmm. I know the story a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know exactly where it's found, but in uh, in uh, Kumbi's Marayan, Kumbi, K-O-M-B-I, mm -hmm. I, I, I know he mentions that particular pastime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, I so read it these, when Subha Vilas yes, did, did his presentation of his Ramayan, and there is the story of Shabri. So should we um, understand that this may have happened in a different kalpa, or how do we uh, understand Maharaj? Like, uh, is it a kalpa bheda, or that you know Valmiki did mm, not mention it in his? And, yeah, um, uh, that's that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, it, it, it appears that Shalri was performing austerities before the appearance of Ram. And then she was, I forgot the name of her spiritual master. Uh, that's mentioned in that pastime. And then her spiritual master said, I'm going back to Godhead and I'm taking all my disciples with me, except you. You should stay and wait and meet the Supreme Lord. He will come to accept your offerings. And then he left. So that means from that indication, it seems like the Lord was about to appear. And he hadn't appeared yet. Hmm. So I, the, um, I, if you read it, I think you can read it in Subha Vilas, 
pre presentation of the Ramayana. And these are like small paperback books, maybe about 250, 300 pages each. And each of the books cover a particular kanda. I think in one of them, maybe the fourth one, um, or the third one, either one, Shabri is mentioned. Sure, Maharaj, thank you so much. I just uh, wanted to mention, there's also a Ramayana book by His Holiness Bhakti Vikas Swami Maharaj. And uh, um, uh, I just wanted to mention that, that that may also be a good reading. Yeah, I can also suggest another version. It's done by one great devotee in Mayapur. He's there now. He did a three volume version of the Ramayana. His name is Vidvan, Vidvan Goranga. Vidvan Goranga, and he's put out a beautiful edition of the Ramayan, hardcover, nice, beautiful books. So you may also uh, go for that particular presentation too. Thanks His so much, Maharaj, for the resources. Thank you so much. Vidvan Goranga, yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much uh, once again for the beautiful question answer session and also making all of us remind that we should always uh, read about Lord Rama, especially these days to um, make our mood uh, for the appearance of Lord Rama. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I think we have morning and uh, afternoon sessions in our Bhakti Sangha, completely glorifications of Lord Rama. Th thank you, Maharaj. So we, we are, we are able to we are yeah, um, Lord Rama. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to speak, speak to, to all the people. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. thank you for the nice narration of the pastime of Lord Ram. Thank you so much. It was so beautiful. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much Maharaj. Maharaj. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Both of you look so bright and effulgent. <laughs> 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 Alita Tangi, you like Ram's pastimes or you like Krishna's pastimes? <laughs> That's a difficult a question, question to answer, Maharaj. <laughs> I was just trying to find out your your bob. That's all. But whatever comes from your uh, mouth and realization, it's so it's so. There's no comparison for that, Maharaj. Such a wonderful narration, and I mean, it's like honey soaked uh, banana given to us, <laughs> and that's what that's what we are getting every Friday. And uh, we can never uh, deserve this. We can only hope to serve you, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you very much. I can never remember eating any honey soaked bananas, but I think maybe they're also quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> Haribo, dear Govinda, Haribo. Radhe, Radhe. <laughs> Thank you. I have to depart because I have another class coming up in, uh, in about two hours. So I have to do a few things before that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your session. I would like to offer my obeisances.